other people are handling doing ranching and why isn't the colony doing that okay and then we're going to talk about once we kind of go over that we'll come back to nigeria and talk about what's actually going on in nigeria right because we have the Bauchi governor saying one thing buhari saying something else and then we'll have a call to action so we'll kick it off now by talking about the fulani and again all of this is done so that our people will understand what they need to know the giving them the knowledge that they need so that they can demand freedom demand referendum so we're having everyone hear exactly what's going on and then make up their own mind, do their research, do more research because we don't have enough time here to uh, provide everything that is going on. So, okay, so let's talk about the Fulani. Who are they and where are they from? But you can unmute because AY is is is, is um, on the phone here. But you can go ahead and unmute. So let's talk about the, the, the Fulani. Are the Fulani indigenous that means an indigenous means that they are from uh the land they are ancestral to the land are they indigenous to west africa so let's let's start by talking about that Mojope, your thoughts on that are they indigenous to west africa well um multiple um write-ups and even um you know um programs and even, um, you know, intellectual discussions and, you know, and uh, prints and video um, media has shown us over and over again that this set of people are not indigenous to West Africa. They actually come from Sahel or Sahel or whatever they call that place, but that's where they come from. They are typically nomadic people. And that's what we've learned over time. They are nomadic people. They do not have any land or any ancestral, you know, um, occupation or, you know, ancestral or, um, you know, place in West Africa. So what they have been doing is going around with their cattle and trying to, you know, um, to occupy land in West Africa. And over time, um, you know, some of uh, some countries in, in West Africa, like Nigeria, do have, you know, history um, with regards to when the first set of Fulanis came into Nigeria. Care. For example, when Uthman and Fulio came, I think like late 1700s, you know, to late 1800. And then, you know, they also have this um, culture, which we'll talk about later on. Yeah. Uh, you know, and their culture, um, you know, is basically not to, uh, not to liaise or to work with people who are indigenous to the land. Their culture, mainly what we've seen so far is to forcibly take land and all that belongs to other people, you know, by force. And that's what the cause of the conflict has always been, wherever they go in West Africa. Because come to think of it, everywhere Fulanis go, trouble follows. So why is that? And so okay. for that reason, you know, um, I think, you know, uh, it's something that we need to basically, you know, analyze and, and get a true understanding of why this is going on. But Absolutely. the answer is no, is they are possibly taking land to Nigeria or West Africa. Okay, Citizen so AY, are you back with us? Yeah, I, I, like I am. Talk about, yes, I am <laughs> back. Like talk about where they actually are from. So yes. And, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Many of the things. Good evening and welcome to everybody. All the everybody joining us on the platform. Where we're watching, of course, Freedom from Nigeria uh, presentation this evening, uh, headed by Jean. And I want to say good evening to Dr. Modupe, uh, Professor um, Anyangwu, and um, Miss uh, Christina Dosumo as well. Uh, good evening to you all and uh, and to our guests who are watching us tonight. Um, as you all know, uh, my favorite topic of the night is talking about the Fulanese and the oppression that they're carrying out in our land. They are non-indigenous to our parts. Let me be very, very clear about that. They are non-indigenous to our parts. Now, we do know, um, quick, a quick synopsis, I'm not going to show you the maps now. I've spoken about it before. Many, they come from the Guinea area. Um, they come from Mali area. They come from even, there are some of them in Cameroon and other places but the 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 three areas that we know of as Futatoro, uh, uh futa jalon and futa the, the three of them in that guinea area that is the area that the first known recordings of these people 
migrating. They migrated from that Guinea area to all parts of um, of Africa. But their historical, um, the, the record that we have goes back to that 17th century period. Um, even 14th, maybe slightly more. But anyway, that is where we've seen them. And it is important that we understand that when they talk about the Fulanis uh, being um, indigenous to Nigeria, it's not the case. And here's one thing I want you to bear in mind in all of this. They always, they, certainly the Nigerian ones, they always talk about Usman Danfudio, or Utman Danfudio, whatever we want to call it. And Utman Danfudio's parents come from Futajalon in Guinea. Yes, he was born in Chokoto, no doubt about that. We, he was born there, but they migrated there. And it's very, very important that we keep reminding them that. Because, and what is really important about why I'm raising this is because through, under the guise of, oh, the, 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 the Hausas were not doing following Islam. They took away Hausa land. And that is very, very important. And you will see that as a recurring theme in other countries. For example, Central African Republic. Again, they say they were hurting, they were doing all these things. You, could, you know, there, there is a theme here. Under the guise of being, oh, you know, you, we want to educate you about so-called quote-unquote religion. Your land is what they come for. And they use their pastoral rights or whatever. They, this thing about land, uh, feeding their cows. They, they say they are nomads. Fine, you can be nomads, but you cannot claim my land. And that is the thing that we have to really mention. And I'm so glad Dr. Modupe mentioned this evening now. Which you actually talked about the fact that they are all over Africa doing the same thing. There is a, there's a, there's a, you can see there's a sequence of events in how they're doing things. There's, you can see that the game plan is all the same wherever they go. Wherever they end up, they end up to so always try to take your land. And that is their objective. And until we understand that as a group, we cannot take collective action. And it is not only affecting us in Nigeria, Central African Republic. They had to get the Russians in to come and chase them away. Okay, okay. So, anyway. um, can we get a talk about ranching, right? Because yeah, this sorry, is sorry. about yes. herder, farmer. Yeah, conflict. now, I, we're going to come. Sorry, <laughs> so I just let, let, let's talk about yeah. that herder, farmer, conflict, because you were touching upon that, right? Yeah. About the fact that they... They're nomads. They're nomadic, yes. right? So they go from place to place. So That's let's correct. talk about that, right? Yeah. Because uh, the Fulanis are going into these countries and insisting on continuing their traditions, mm -hmm. ignoring the traditions of the places that they're in. And the world media is talking about how this is herder farmer conflict. So let's talk about that. How is ranching being done around the world? And mm. Prof, you can join us in this conversation. Yeah, mm. go ahead, Prof. How is ranching? How is cardo rearing being done around the world? And how does that compare to what the Fulanese are doing? And insisting that their host countries adopt. Go ahead, Prof. I, I simply want to chip in a few known scientific facts about the origin of the Fulanese. Okay. And that dispels the doubt in our mind. They are considered a population that came from the Berbers with admixture of European genes. And one prominent example is the fact that most Fulanese, if not all, tolerate lactase. Uh, um, milk, normal milk, which you get from cattle. That is why, not just because they live on cattle, but they have had these genes because of crossing between the Berbers and Southern Europeans, and they've come to settle across uh, West Africa from Guinea up to the so-called Blue Nile, uh, Southern Sudan. That is a place we um, uh, see them mostly. I don't want to repeat what every other person has said about the way they behave. But the major thing is they are really genetically not of West African or Sub-Saharan origin. That's wow. 
wow, wow, you know, Prof, something that you said now makes sense because if they have European blood and we know who is supporting them in Nigeria, that there are all those documents that have been unpacked about the British, you know, and um, wow, that's a great connection, people, that, that we, uh, that the audience need to know about, you know, because I think, you know, there's also that connection to the Arab world through the, um, you know, through the, um, you know, religion and the extremist. And let me make it, let me make it clear. Muslims are not an issue in Nigeria. We're talking about extremists, like those in Afghanistan. We're talking about extremists, not just your regular folks who below, who are uh, part of uh, Islam. Okay, that's what we're talking about. But that is great information, you know, to really kind of clarify that. Now, let's talk about ranching. How is ranching done? Logic Bay, how is ranching done in the U.S.? Do they go to farmers' farms and let their cows loose there? No, um, actually, um, actually, that was uh, that was back way back. I mean, people don't even practice that anymore. So, so, so usually, I mean, it's it's more of a kind of a you know a technological uh, or an advanced way of you know of, of rearing you know cattle um here you will have people have like a you know like they have their own you know um like i'll say their own land where they actually rear and where they take care of their cattle their their you know their 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 livestock don't wander into other people's neighborhoods or wander wander into other people's um you know farmland or other people's um you know uh properties that is not done here in the U.S., and I believe that that's also the case in, a, you know, in some in some other countries where even you know the products that are obtained from the from the cattle, where they, I mean those are even um, huge um, produce a huge amount of money to the economy, where exactly, it's even substantial, exactly. and they don't do open grazing. So how much does pastoralism or you know cow or cattle rearing? How, I mean, how much do, does that even contribute to the Nigerian economy to the point where it's now the cause of displacement for millions of Nigerians? So it well, absolutely the killings, makes sense. For the killings, right? Yeah, uh-huh. killings, yeah, killings and displacement. You know, it does not even contribute. I don't even know. I think that's something that we need to find out. How much does it even contribute to the economy mm-hmm. that it has to really go to the point where, you know, uh, you know, um, the, the, uh, the whole country is in disarray? You know, because of their, of their, of their, of their, um, of their, what they call their own livelihood. How does private, you know, businesses, you know, uh, pe- individuals' livelihood, uh, you know, uh, should now impact the way people live in a country? So it's just, I mean, it's one of the lingering questions, and I know we will get into it right, because, right, uh, right. but but in the U.S., as we know, yes, um, uh, uh, the um, they've got deserts here. Right, they have deserts in the U.S. and they yes, have indeed. ranches where they have cattle. In Texas, there's lots Absolutely. of deserts in Texas. In California, Florida, yes, 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 everywhere, right? In well, Georgia, not going in Georgia, on to other farmers' uh, lands and taking the land forcibly, right, and then putting their their cattle on that land and saying it is theirs. Um, um, Citizen AY, are you able to talk? Because we'll like to ask a question about in England. And we know who's behind the Fulanes. In England, <laughs> do they have their um, ranchers, their cattle rarers, move their cattle through the streets of London, defecating and destroying property? Do they have those cattle going through you know, other cities and farms and going into forests, right? Whatever forest that they see that belongs to the government or belongs to uh, individuals and taking it forcibly. Citizen AY, are you with us? I think he's otherwise um, sorry, engaged sorry right about now. This, guys. We, have, uh, sorry. we have things breaking uh, regarding Sunday. But in England, as um, I've been to England, I have not mm-hmm. seen a situation where the um, cattle rarers are doing what the Fulani are doing in sub-Sahara Africa, in West Africa. I have not seen that there, and no one would tolerate that. No farmer would tolerate 
uh, a cattle rarer coming to their um, to their farm and pulling up their crops to feed the cattle because the food production system would be badly impacted, right? It will start resulting in starvation, et cetera, right? And so that really isn't something that, um, you know, that, uh, that will be good and that doesn't happen. So let's ask the question, where are they now in West Africa? And why is the world putting out this false narrative because I'm calling it false for now, but we'll continue talking about it. Why are they putting out this narrative that the conflict in Nigeria is herd or farmer? Why are they talking about that in Ghana, it's herd or farmer? In Central African Republic, it's herd or farmer, right? In Mali, it's herd or farmer. Why is that? Well, Jane, you said, um, you know, on uh, the last sentence that you um, that you made that that you stated before before you went on to ask this question, you said that uh, you know uh, that um, you never that you've been to England before, mm -hmm. and I actually lived in England, you know, before mm -hmm. I you know before I um, came to the U.S. Right? Um, I never saw you know uh, cattle or you know or livestock or you know those those kinds. Of, on the roads, I, I didn't even know. I I never even saw a period ever, exactly. you know. So yeah, so it so it it's not. I mean, th that's not. It's not done anywhere, yes. and so uh, everywhere we go. So to now segue into what is going on in West Africa, every single country that you go in West Africa, where the Fulanis have been to, or where they are currently, you know, trying to invade, it's the same issue. And they call it farmer eaters, um, uh, uh, farmer eaters clash, but it's the same issue, and it's a false narrative, like you said, it's a false label to to somehow you know remove people's attention from the main problem. The main here is the main problem. The main problem is that you have a group of people who are not, I mean, who are not indigenous to a land, trying to now um, get over, I mean, um, you know, bring themselves into other people's land. And you know, because we in Africa, generally, um, you know, African cultures generally are very, um, you know, uh, people of African descent or African uh, people are very accommodating, you know, generally, which is right, which is one right. of the reasons Absolutely. why we, I mean, we got burned by, by by accommodating Europeans, and this is where it landed us. But anyway, so we're very accommodating, generally speaking. So, um, so people who technically want to, uh, you know, um, you know, um accept this this Fulani people, right? Uh, to come, you know, to come and I mean, if we have all this land and we have a little that we can that we can actually, you know, um uh, allow you to use, we will let you. But that's not what the Fulanis want. And that yeah. is the problem. That is the main they don't want to, they don't want a piece of your land and to negotiate it in a peaceful way and in a civilized way. There's this primitiveness about the way that they do things. And I'm sorry if I'm getting a little bit emotional. There's this primitive, there's this primitiveness about it that you know somehow if I come to your land, I can kill you and take the. Why do I need to manage a piece of it? Why don't I just kill you and take the whole thing? Kind of concept. And I'm saying that 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 concept is the main problem. It is not no other farmers clash. It is actually the lack of respect for other people's boundaries both geographical boundaries and personal boundaries. They just yeah. don't understand the concept of boundaries. They no, are I, boundaries. Think, I think they understand the concept of boundaries, but they yeah. step over them purposefully. Purposely, okay. and that's what it's, I'm it, saying. This is being yeah, done on purpose, so, right? Exactly, so, 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 so maybe, I mean, maybe I misspoke when I say, that when I said that they don't understand the concept of boundaries, they choose not to understand the concept of because boundaries. Because it is repeating, right? Because it is it's repeating, repeating. it's a pattern. And I do have, and I do have different, you know, like um, a video, you know, of complaints of people in different different yeah. countries. In Ghana, yeah. is the same thing. In Mali, is the same thing. In Senegal, is the same thing. In Gambia, is the same thing. Even in Nigeria now, is the same thing. So, it's so can, can we take a look at some of those headlines and then we'll okay. play some of the videos as well? That would be fantastic. Yes, because people yes, need to understand. understand yes. This isn't just a Nigeria problem. The Fulani yes. menace, as it has been termed now repeatedly, is happening throughout Africa. 
And uh, as I said, towards the end of the broadcast, we'll talk about how it is impacted Nigeria, what the Bauchi uh, governor said about it, what the uh, Buhari said about it, and, 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 and to help us to kind of understand what is going on, right? So first of all, we know from all the information that they are not, you know, Prob gave us a really powerful message here about the fact that they are definitely not ancestral to the land, right? And uh, we know that they came uh, to Nigeria, you know, the earliest that we can think about is in the 17, late 1700s, you know, with mm -hmm. Osman and Polio. It is quite possible that maybe a few of them had migrated before, but again, it, 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 they, they're newcomers to the land when you really look at it from that perspective. So then, why is it that everywhere they go, we talk about her, the farmer conflict, when human beings, hundreds and thousands of human beings are being killed. How is this okay for human beings to be killed so that cattle can live? I mean, we're talking about, you know, you, you know, we have the story about the Trojan horses. This is the Fulani Trojan cows, because in this case, they're using the cows as a lead in. It's what it looks like, you know, because you see it repeating. So do you have those headlines, Modupe? I'm talking yes, until you can yes, bring I'm, it. I'm trying to. Yeah, once it. once you, uh, you have a, a yeah. few headlines uh, mm -hmm. so that we can take a look so that people can understand we're not just talking about it. On this program, we really look to facts and share the facts about what's going on. So Central African Republic, Mali, Ghana, and I think Modupe, we have that um, article from the Ghanaian uh, journalist yeah, that that actually, really... you know, said we need to use force to get these people out because they're killing, they're killing people and destroying farms. We'll talk about that, you know, about that, what's happening in Nigeria too, along with that, you know. So again, what we're talking about is that this is widespread in West Africa. And um, while you are, while you are doing, doing, doing that, that, let me uh, bring up the, uh, yeah. let me take a yeah. look at the, Headline. Did you give about, me the ability to share? Go on. Yes, I think you did. Yeah, you are a co host, okay. so that, that, that should be there. But just to okay. be sure, you know, let me just make sure that it's set for, yeah, you can you can share because you're a co host. Um, so if, if you're not ready, let me just go ahead and, and share yeah, go, go ahead. about, go ahead. about the, the, the presidents, right? Let me go ahead and share that because I think it is important for our people to understand what their program really is. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. This is what the program really is. Take a look at this. Four current West African presidents that are Fulani by tribe. Mm -hmm. Is that shocking to you that the people that don't own the land, they don't own the land. They have now concentrated themselves in Nigeria Mali, Guinea, Cameroon, Senegal, and Niger. Huh, mm -hmm. Niger. Is that where Buhari signed a refinery contract to refine in Niger and not to refine in the south of Nigeria where mm -hmm. the oil resides? Are you guys now seeing the connection, right? So... Uh, as you can see, this is this is what is going on. Is this four current West African presidents that are Fulani by tribe? Is that shocking to you, Modupe? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I these are people that are not indigenous. Why are why us the West African countries not putting? Um, uh, 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 criteria of who can lead the country, right? Here he is, Macky Sall, president of Senegal, Fulani. Okay. And uh, oh. let's see, I'm just going down here just so that we can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is Macky. His. Okay, where are the other pictures? I'm going too yeah. many to the one. So, um, Ra Ramadan Burak. Ramadan Burak. Barak. Yeah. Okay. Or something like that. Yeah. Adama um, Baro, the Gambia. Fulani. Are they from Gambia? We need to have criteria. 
yes. that non-indigenous people cannot rule in <laughs> West Africa, people, because this is what they do. They shift their people around from one place to the other, right? So, you know, they, they move their citizenship around so that they can capture the presidents, okay? The presidency. Guinea-Bissau, Omaro, Sissoko, and Balo. Okay, Guinea-Bissau. Fulani, are they from uh, Guinea-Bissau? Well, I mean, in um, I think the first place that they moved to was in uh, Futajelon, which is, um, uh, but that's in the Gambia, not in the Guinea. But they've now moved into the Guinea and captured the presidency there. Okay. And of course, Buhari, the biggest prize to date, right? This is their biggest prize to date is Nigeria. What are West Africans doing? Why are we allowing non-Indigenous people to rule our country and take over our resources, take our lives, our land, and give it to their people? There's a consolidation, people, that's going on in West Africa, as you can see clearly. So, Prof, what are your thoughts on this subject? Is this herder farmer conflict, or are these invasions going on in the way that they are sitting on a lot of West African countries? And now Ghana is not on that list yet, right? Ghana is not on that list, but they're there, right? Mali, Central African it Republic, does. because they let's let's just talk about that. As I say things, it is not a herd of a conflict. If at all, it is only made politically. The major problem is, uh, it has been said already, the benevolence of the Black African society. That was what turned Egypt into what it is today. And that is what turned the society and the way we live in the south of the Sahara, um, uh, it came to be. And if you look at the former colonies, France and Britain were competing actually for the territories in West Africa. And they chose by force the people they can work with easily. And it happens to be the Fulanese who really, I don't know if the time the um, colonialists came, if they had an agenda, but okay, as so, time- Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, no, go, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I clicked the wrong thing, go ahead. But as time went on, there is a, would I say collusion? No, there's an agreement between the recording uh, stuff and the colonialists so that it was easy for them to hand over the political and the economic power to the uh, Fulanis because they had something I would call shifting responsibility. They were moving and the time they governed one area and moved another place, they weren't a danger to the people colonizing and who wanted to stay in, in the area. That is with the former British um, colonists, the same, and the former French colonists. And the two of them have come to this unholy alliance in order to suppress the indigents. I can go ahead naming the generals, especially of the French army, uh, those of them, and of the British army, those who drove the way Prempe, those who drove the way um, uh, King Jaja of Opobo, in order to make room for all these things. See, they were all working um, concurrently in order to suppress the people that is against them, and that those were the natives, the um, um, uh, indigents of the country, wow. Wow. and all the others, the Fulanese especially, we are very accommodative to them and we are their obedient servant. Right, and, 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 and I'm glad that you, that you brought that up because one of the things that we have, uh, that's been unearthed too, is before that 1914 amalgamation, that there was a plan to enslave the native 
not the Fulani because the, the Fulanis are not native to Nigeria, right? So while we were celebrating uh, independence, colonization was alive and well, right? Because we got the independence and the indigenous nations, you know, the regions, the Western region, the Eastern region, the Midwest, you know, the Northern, and there were a couple of other regions like the Middle Belt that was supposed to be, uh, that was supposed to be carved out as well, thought they had independence. It was just a ploy because in 1966, we know what happened, right? And we know who took over from that point on. So again, we're talking about, you know, uh, is this Fulani killings around sub-Sahara Africa really heard a farmer conflict? Is that what it is? You know, or is so it? I have the else? Ghanaian. I have the Ghanaian thing now. Okay, Sorry, I clicked the wrong. Episode, I was right? going to bring you know, it on. The Western world, right? But the Western world is. This is their narrative. Every single time, except for a few times when CNN, I haven't even seen BBC ever, ever note that this is, you know, either it's a genocide of Christians and and um, and uh, modern Muslims and others. But mainly, they call it herd of farmer conflict, which doesn't make any sense. Go ahead, Madhupan. Yes. Uh, so I have the Ghanaian um, video right now. So uh, I actually, I, I, you know, I was going to bring it on and then I clicked the wrong thing and then I kicked myself out. So that was what uh, Yeah, happened. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let me uh, bring it up now. Okay. So I'm going to $80 gadget. Just attach it to your hose and cut through dirt right. and grime in seconds. No more. The Fulani people are a nomadic ethnic group that move with their cattle across West and Central Africa. But with population growth, there is less space for their herds to graze freely. That means they often come into conflict with owners of farmland who accuse them of trespassing and destroying their crops. Here's an example of how this dispute is playing out in Ghana. Sambo is a Fulani herdsman in eastern Ghana. He owns thousands of cattle. They graze on lands like these. And that's creating problems with the locals who own the farmland. They are now retaliating. We don't have any other job. We raise livestock and farm at the same time to make a living. For many years, we've done this without issues. But in recent years, our cattle have been attacked and killed by locals and security forces. They are trying to destroy our livelihood. Samo has lived here all his life. He was yeah, can I just say something and, and I'll continue. You do you know I think yes. I think there's something about the mindset that they are trying exactly. to they are trying exactly. to, to um to kill their livelihood. But do exactly. you know that the that the crops, other people's crops that exactly. you're cutting are feeding exactly. on is somebody else's livelihood? I mean exactly. this is for me, the, you know, this is the narcissism of their thinking because they are so narcissistic. They only think about I, me, I, I, me, me, me. And they're not even thinking about the, the other people. You, you, I mean, like you brought your cattle onto people's land where they have crops, right? Yes. That they've worked so hard. Some of them yes. even took loans, right? To, yes. you know, to, have to grow the crops. Now, you, now, now your cattle are feeding on the, you know, I mean, on the crop. And you're saying that the people, and, and you are questioning why the people were angry. Right. So yeah. and that's what I'm saying. You know, the, I mean, the false narrative that is that is a uh, uh, that is this, uh, uh, ad man and, and farmers clash. It's not no uh, ad man farmers clash. It is pure trespassing and you stealing from other people. And we should call it what it is. We yeah, it's a felony. It. It's a felony. It's you know, it's it. murder. It's a felony yeah. because people are being it's killed. Not, that's what I'm Farms saying. Are being I'm destroyed. Saying they have the mouth. Yeah, yeah, they have the mouth to say, oh, you. Can you imagine? I mean, it's like I mean, it's like an armed robber going into somebody's home and saying, yes. oh, "Oh, the person hit me. Oh, they hit me. Oh, well, what are you doing there?" Right? Yeah, my livelihood is being an armed robber, right? That's so they should let me rob because if they don't let me rob, I am going to, you know, they're preventing my trade. Thank you. Thank right? you. When you're oh, actually the one who's the perpetrator, they're the perpetrators. They're the ones who are destroying. Let's talk about, let's, let's, you know, the multiple, I know we're going to continue, but let's, uh, since we're talking about this, in Nigeria, okay. 
Four million, over four million people now have been displaced from their farm land. Over four million people, the Fulani herdsmen have displaced them from the farm, farm land in Benue State alone. It is shocking. We've seen that. And what yeah, and how know. has the government responded to this? How has the government yeah, responded, to, to, responded to this atrocity, right? This mm -hmm. is a felony. It's a crime. It is a crime. The government has never once called for anything to happen. So go ahead, Madhupe, with the video so that yes. people can see Born what's into really the going on. Nigerians need to understand, like right? Because grandfather. if we don't bring all this information together uh, to them, they will continue to see what the Western world and what the Fulanis around the world, as we can see, they're rising to power everywhere, right? You know, four Ooh. West African countries, you know, that includes Nigeria, now have Fulani as presidents. Okay, so let, let, let's continue, Majipa. He explains why he now feels threatened by the current hostilities. Are you still there, Majipa? I'm here. Yeah, go ahead and continue the video. Oh, the video is playing. Yeah. It's not, are you not seeing it? No, it's, it's, I'm not seeing it. Okay, so let so me, let me go back. Now. Maybe I need to go back. Yeah, okay. it was, it was, it was playing, but you have it to be sharing. You ended your sharing. Oh, okay, but is this showing now? Yeah, it yeah. is showing. Let's go ahead and restart it. Go yeah. ahead and restart it. Are you seeing my screen now, right? I mean, my screen now. Screen. Just go ahead and restart it. I mean, go ahead and start it. There you go our cattle, but hearing? also shooting at our children yeah. and workers who herd the cattle. Some have even died. So now we Fulanis are scared. Sambo is not alone in this predicament. Today he's attending a meeting with other Fulanis in his community. They often come together to discuss the challenges they face, sharing stories of discrimination and how they can stay safe. Any time we meet like this, we have been advising ourselves, we have been advising our children not to be quarreling with people or not be doing all evil things alone. Some residents in the community say the problems with the Fulanis go beyond the destruction of the farmland. To be honest, if they want to appease the locals, they would have to stop committing crimes. There would be peace and unity among us in this community mm -hmm. if some of them would stop stealing and doing other bad things. Mm. Experts say the lack of a proper land ownership system and a lack of community sensitivity have contributed to the conflict. The lack of clear demarcation of where you can graze, where you can farm, is a major problem. So there's some form of competition for space. This is a false in, narrative right some of here. The zones. In other places, it's lack of information. The government has struggled to come up with a solution. For now, Fulanis like Sambo pray for an end to hostilities to protect his livelihood and his family. Africa. But with population growth, okay, there is so, less uh, space I'm for the herds we, we, to we can end, yeah, let's end this and talk about this. Because this is part of the false narrative that we're talking about, right? The government is struggling to come up with a solution for people who don't own land against people who own the land. The farmer's land. A farmer was there first. He planted his crops there first. How then is it his fault that the Fulani herdsmen bring their cattle and feed them on his farm? How is that the farmer's problem? Why isn't the Fulani being told to purchase their own land and enclose their herd as has been done around the world? Why must we accommodate these barbaric methods that result in hundreds of thousands of human lives being killed and millions being starved, as is happening in Nigeria right now. Can we talk about that? Yes, because in their myopic, corrupted, corrupted mindset, uh, every land on the West African coast uh, 
east of Guinea, the Futajalo Mountains of Guinea, was bequeathed to them by their grandfather, Othman Danfodio. But did so, he own the land, um, it, uh, Mr. Fogarty? Did he, he own, own purchase? He did he purchase own the, the land. land for them? He didn't own the land to begin with. Exactly. Yes, he didn't own the land to begin with. And that's why I said, uh, the, just yeah, like you rightfully said, the false narrative. Mm -hmm. Yes, brought out the, the, the myopic mindset that their grandfather, I actually, uh, uh, the, the, the myopic hala, okay? Because there is, there, there is true, there is the true hala that the, that the worshipers rightfully exactly. worship exactly. and who recognize uh, ownership through, uh, uh, what is it? Through proper bequeathing of uh, estates exactly. or, or, or purchase. But to them, wherever their grandfather and their fathers said uh, belongs to them on the West African coast, belongs to them. So they right. don't care what it takes. They don't care who has title to the land. They have a- But, but, but why are these governments, why are these governments not making it clear? It's a very simple solution. Buy the land and enclose your cattle. That is the solution. Why are we ketoing to the proper traders? Is this That's, because, as as uh, Prof has said before, that they have European blood in them and some Arab blood in them? Is this why they're getting preferential treatment against ancestral Africans? What is going on here? Well, uh, Jean, uh, if I may, oh, sorry, sorry, um, do, I do want. Okay, if I may, just say quickly. See, um, just, just, uh, just. Like you said, you said they have some mixture of European blood or whatever. And they feel Arab. entitled. That's yes. it. They feel entitled. They feel like, oh yeah, you know what? Because we we feel they feel entitled, and that's why they can quote, you know, their uh, their grandfather's delusion, of, yes. you know, delusion that he has been willed a land that he never owned. I mean, that he has willed to them, uh, uh, you know, land that he never owned. So, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. You see, and and again, you know, and and they keep saying this, and 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 question again that you ask that why why I mean why I mean why are the governments of these countries also yes. you know, dancing to that tune? You, exactly. you answer it. A lot of them are Fulanis, and that's why what they are doing in a cunning way, you know, they they you know they 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 try to get themselves into the position of a, and you know and just snatch power, you know, when they snatch it right. from people, so that they can now. You know, uh, implement their own. I mean, their you know their delusion. You know, of we own the land, so that they can implement it through their you know through their uh, you know, their governmental power. But what you see in Ghana, the reason why they are not able to penetrate in Ghana is because you know the Ghanaian society. If you see, it's like they already. I mean, they kind of nip it in the bud where you know before it festered. Unlike no, I mean, in other countries like, yeah. where we, we did it, we were not we were not very vigilant. And then they were already in before we realized what was going on. Yeah. Now let's talk about let's talk about um, uh, why these governments, right? In Ghana, for instance, right? Oh, let me leave the governments for now. The reporter himself. Why didn't he say to this Fulaniman, "You do know that that farmer owns that land and has planted that crop for himself and for other people"? Why? Isn't anyone, all these reporters, why isn't anyone asking them these questions? What is going on here? Western ideas, you already said it. And they have the Western, the external factor. That's what it is, that's why. I mean, in my in my own two cents, that's what I think. But but maybe other people may have, you know, some other reasons why this is this, why this is so. Prof and Yerebe, mm -hmm. can you help us here? Because we have a situation that the perpetrators of crimes, of the destruction of the food chain, which in Nigeria has now driven, you know what, we've got uh, um, hunger and starvation because they are destroying the farm belt in the, in the middle belt, in, especially in Benue. They're destroying, destroying all those farms and taking them over with impunity, meaning the government 
the Fulani government led by Buhari in Nigeria is letting them get away with that, right? But in Ghana, right? Why aren't the government siding with the victims who are the farmers that own the land, have planted their crops so that they can feed themselves and feed their families? Why are why are all these governments trying to keto to the Fulanese who don't own land, who are not from the land, but are pretty much intruders. They're not even, a lot of them are not even immigrants. You have grazing routes. That does not give you rights. So can you help uh, us with this? What is going on? Uh, the whole thing, it is for me extremely difficult to look at what is happening at the moment because it looks like a reaction mm -hmm. uh, about things that have been stagnating and nobody paid attention to over the years. Absolutely. Number one, I still go back to the colonial times mm -hmm. because they are the people who implanted this impunity. They were against organizations in among the indigenous people because every organization was seen as an opposition to the colonial government. And those communities, the Fulanese, for instance, who didn't have the sort of organization that would oppose the invaders, in my concept of invaders, are classified the British and the French, the Portuguese and whoever that came on that way, mm -hmm. it is easier for them, invaders, to understand themselves and mm -hmm. suffocate mm -hmm. every organization coming up among the indigenous people. Okay. For a farm, in, I live in Europe, I don't, no, anywhere in Europe where you can get cattle, just cross the street. In fact, if the cattle herd is crossing the street, you have the police blocking the access to make sure that nobody is injured. And before you have a cattle, for goodness sake, you have to be registered. It has to be approved. The yeah. number of animals you are allowed to keep is um uh, uh pre prescribed you must have a veterinary doctor to take care of it and you must have the whole service chain up to the um malls where you are going to sell the animals you see that is an organization uh we don't have any such organization in any African community, as far as distribution of food and uh um um yeah, food chain is concerned. And that means since the government didn't don't make the effort to organize things so that they are equitable, every person feels obliged to do whatever he thinks is right. And now we come to the question, who has the money? Who can be bribed? And, you know, all these things come to mix up with uh, so many things. Now, if you okay. talk, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it is difficult now for the indigenous people to organize themselves and say, look, we don't want all these cattle coming in. You see, they are doing it at individual level, but not at an organized level. And if you have a government that does not have rules to that make is, sure- especially ours at this full of day too. Yeah, to make sure that there is some degree of order in whatever we are doing. You see, it becomes um, not just exactly. a question of survival of the fittest, but a survival of the powerful. Exactly, exactly. And uh, Joseph Carey, Dr. Dr. Carey, uh, welcome and uh, go ahead. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jen, for this opportunity. I, I, I listen keenly to what Professor Ayin 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 Sorry, uh, Prof, for my butchering your name. Um, um, it, it, it's, it's a fact. It's, um, it's um, the historical fact. It's uh, just to add to what uh, Prof said. You see, um, the 
before the colonial masters came, the, the Fulani were also conquerors in the sense that they had, remember they had upstaged the, um, the house uh, chiefs mm -hmm. and they had uh, implanted mm -hmm. the emirate count, emirate, okay? Mm -hmm. In other words, um, so they had control over all the house, uh, both the house, uh, what we call the house of Bukwe and the bands of Bukwe. Um, and also they had claimed, not that it was true that they had conquered uh, a large swathe of middle belt, not that they had done it. So they had actually had what we call Zango. I don't know if you hear of Zango. So wherever they had, if indigenous communities in Benue or, or especially in Southern Kaduna um, were they, those, in order to fend off the jihad um, onslaught, they lived in near caves where for natural protection. So if the jihadi man went and saw that there was uh, the place had been abandoned, they put their flag, called a jihadi flag, and they established communities, what they call Zango. So by the time the, um, the superior conqueror came, the colonial master, because they had weapons, more superior than the Fulani. So it was easier for them to understand each other. So, the, so you know, if you heard about the indirect rule and the direct rule, you know, whilst it was not successful in the in the southeast in particular, because already, uh, yeah, there was they had a lot of rebellion against it. It was more successful in the north because already there was a system of subjugation, control, land control. Uh, the 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 houses were now as seen as serves. Mm -hmm. They were slaves to their own land, their own land. Yes. So every community, every um, um, traditional. Uh, um, uh, you know, like um, Emirates or on the branch Emirates or the district level was the Emir would send their own kids and kins to rule. Now, so so it, it, it was a hand, it was easier for the colonial masters to use them easily and do the indirect rule and so that they could usurp the, the, um, or get the resources over to, to Europe, for example. So that, his, that history, that, that uh, um, compromise, that conspiracy mm -hmm. uh, worked well both for the Fulani and for the colonial mass. And of course, you know that that's why the handover, the, the, the independence was a lot easier to hand over power to a Fulani controlled yeah. government. Yes. Now, the civil war, I want to let you know, um, uh, is, it's, it's actually it's a, a jihad, a continuation of jihad. Yes. yes. Nothing more, yes. nothing less. Yes. Uh, the only way for them to convince the world that it was not a jihad was to foist uh, Yakub Gowan as the head of state exactly. to claim that it's a Christian, therefore it's not a Christian war. Exactly. But it was a purely um, uh, jihadi onslaught against the Southeast. And who did they use against the Southeast? They used Christian soldiers, okay, from the middle yes. of the belt, yes. okay, to yes. go and fight each other. Yes. So that, that yes. once they were doing that, they were taking over the properties of the 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 Ibos. They were taking the land and yes. also taking the land of the indigenous middle belters as well. Exactly, okay. and so they still it. are. They still are, as we yeah. know, right? You know, that yeah. Yeah. Happening. So, so, so it is. It is. This is the 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 reason now to answer the question: Why is this government? This government is a perpetuation. This government, they are beneficiaries of the of uh, uh, jihad. They, yes. they they went into the military to serve the purpose of the caliphate. Uh, uh, Buhari went to the military to serve the purpose to champion the cause of the caliphate. They um, and and so they are there to continue with what the so-called uh, forefathers had vowed and had pledged the land to be there. So they would not, instead of fighting, bringing law and order. There's no law and order in this government. There is no. Uh, a rule of law is con it's been completely thrown out. So it, the, the main reason when there's chaos in dictatorship and jihad, when there's chaos, it allows the, the grand master to perpetuate their agenda. Well, if there's order, then of course you would challenge that. <laughs> All right, and so on. Right. So, and, 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 and sorry, just uh, uh, well, maybe, uh, it, why did we have a CG, uh, C, um, the um, chief justice as a Sharia? Law, Sharia person. It's yes. all part of the game plan to ensure that the land, uh, game grabbing, 
Because jihad yes. has five, there's the, there's the religious bit of it, there's the economic visit, bit of it, there's the political um, bit of it. So the three things, are not, they're, not, they're not separable. You and I may say, okay, you can separate being a Christian from being a politician, but the, the, a jihadi person, uh, they believe in theocracy. The emir is next to God. Yeah. All right. So uh, the land belongs to him. <laughs> okay. Right. And he chooses to give who he wants to give to. So the indigenous people of Middle Belt are infidels. They don't deserve the land. They're meant to be conquered by force. And hence the Sharia law, which has been the main rule now in Nigeria. In the 12th contiguous states, exactly, exactly. But they have also put that in the in the constitution. Okay, so let's kind of oh, bring yeah. let's, let's kind of bring all of this together because I mean this is great for our people to know. I mean this is vital information, right? Because we have seen, I'm sure a lot of people didn't even know. Um, uh, but do you have that uh, the, the four presidents that were talked about? That is from Senegal to Guinea Bissau to yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, and, and, and this is what is going on. I mean, you, you, you see, here it is. Fulani Hertzman with AK-47. Is that not what they're using in Nigeria? And this is in Central African Republic, right? This is what is going on around West Africa. Yeah, so this is, this is the Buhari, um, you know, his pronouncements, but um, I have the one for Kai, if you want me to bring that. Yeah, up. no, no. okay, let's go ahead and talk about it. We, we can go ahead and okay. talk about this now, right? Because yeah. one of the things that we've been talking about is that Bauchi governor, right, uh, 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 Bello, that said that all Africans are citizens of Nigeria. That was in 20, 2019, wasn't it? And uh, do you want to read what Buhari had to say? And this was this was 2020, right? All, all Fulanese. Mm -hmm. Yes, all Fulanese. Sorry, exactly. all Fulanese are citizens of Nigeria. Exactly. So, yes. Yeah. So, oh, um, are you? Uh, what, the, let's see what Buhari had to say about okay. that. So he said something here. I cannot refuse to say I am not one of them, but he's been very unfair to me. And and I told him that the Nigerian cattle areas are not carrying anything more than a stick, sometimes a machete to cut trees. Mm. This is what he, they are saying, right? But we know that that's not the truth. Yeah, now, that is true. That is true. She, okay, I'm sorry. No, you're, you're, no, what you're saying is true. You're correct. Yes, exactly. So, um, you know, so so he's saying that, you know, they are, it, and, and you know, Bwari was saying that, oh, no, they are not Nigerians. They are Fulanis from other places. But it's difficult to be able, I mean, it's difficult for us to, you know, to differentiate them, you know, those who are not from Nigeria and, for, and those who are not. So for that reason, I cannot really do much, you know, except to look for a way to create an open grazing, I mean, cr uh, create like a path for them so that they can graze their land. I'm like, what are you are talking you about? Yeah, yeah, can you please read that again, Modupe? Please read that again, what he said. Yeah, so, in okay, a sovereign so, state. Because, because he said there, Modupe, he did say there that they are not Nigerians, they're foreigners. You know, if you can yes. look for yes, that. He said that, yes, he it. said, but those with it. So, so he said that the ones who are carrying the sticks, right, that Fulani, the one, uh, that a lot of them, the ones that are from Nigeria, that they mainly carry their sticks and their, and their machete. But the ones who are carrying AK-47, are uh, those from they are they are Fulanis from Mauritania from Central Republic, uh, Central Republic of Africa or Central African Republic? They look the same, so they would think they are Nigerians. So uh -huh. you're trying to uh, I, I would, hold on, like who who would think that they are Nigerians? Is it them that are saying they are Nigerians? But you know, you know, it's like remember the Benue State Governor uh, said. I mean, be, not Benue. I'm sorry, the Bachi State Governor said. Oh, the ones, uh, the Fulanis from uh, from outside of West Africa, they can speak a Bayelsa language. Yeah, you know, so it's like they are making the case for them that you know what they are actually the same as us. You know, they, you know, so they look like us. They are the same like us. You know, so then he said, right, right, but but I assure you, we are trying to take these cattle routes." Right, but one of the things that I wanted to point out is that mm -hmm. Bauchi governor said that all Fulani around Africa as citizens of Nigeria. But yes, Buhari I, it, 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 it. is saying- you want to bring that, that video up? No, no, I just want to talk about what Buhari, because I think we've talked about that, you know, not, okay. but Buhari is saying that they are not, the people who are committing the crimes are not Nigerian Fulani. They are other Fulani from other African countries. 
So how do um, you reconcile that? Oh, he said, he said that we well, I mean, we're, 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 we're playing a hard and fast yeah. here, it's right? A, it's a strategy. Yeah. It's a takia. It's what we'll call it takia strategy. Jihadis have the only way they can delude themselves or, de or deceive those who believe in them. Because unfortunately, there are lots of so-called Nigerians from the Middle Belt, from mm -hmm. the Southeast and the Southwest, who still believe in this delusion, mm -hmm. this, uh, yeah, this, who still believe that they, they mean no harm. But actually, it's a, it's a deceit. I mean, of course, one of the mm -hmm. best ways a jihadi can conquer is to, cl to claim innocence, to claim naivety is not me. Exactly. They work hand in exactly. hand. You are there, if you watch the, nine, the 2019 campaign, uh, um, his, his kids and kids from Niger Republic came mm -hmm. to uh, Katsina. They have allegiance. Buhari's allegiance is fundamentally to his kit and kins in the Niger Republic and other parts of Africa than any other person in Nigeria, okay? Why is the railway line being uh, okay, constructed to Niger Republic? It's to link their kit and kin. So it's, it's made deceit. It's made deceit. Uh, so they have to speak and confuse us. Uh, one minute, the, the, um, the Sultan of Sokoto will say, yes, 90% or 99% of the people who are committing the crime and killing are Fulani people. Yes. So we don't care whether they are in, they one in Nigeria or the one from outside, they are the same. They have the same agenda. They are actually the informants. They are the ones that invite them in. Buhari is one of which does that. So it's made deceit. Thank you. Yeah, but, but th this is one of the things that is uh, perplexing, right? If the ones who are carrying the AK-47s are the criminals, mm -hmm. why isn't the Nigerian government? You, you it's either you're, if you're carrying a machete, you're a peaceful uh, person who has, who has settled in Nigeria, right? But if you're carrying AK-47, you're a foreigner. Why hasn't the army and the police, when they catch those with those AK-47s who are proliferating everywhere, walking around with it, right? Why haven't they arrested them? Because they're the foreign felony. And so what I'm trying to say is that Buhari has established that foreign felony are not Nigerians, regardless of what um, uh, uh, Bala Muhammad, whatever his name is, Bala Muhammad, right? Regardless of what he says, right? Foreign Fulani are not citizens of Nigeria. The president of Nigeria has said so. The constitution, even though it's fraud, also says so, right? Right? Uh, uh, me, so, it, it, good afternoon to you all. Um, good evening to you all. Sorry, but I had to just, uh, I was in and out a lot. Um, but I've been following what was going on, and um, I am very much in support of what um, has been discussed here in terms of the Fulanese, and especially... The excuse, no, unwillingness, or we, we don't, we're not prepared to accept the excuse of the Buhari government or Buala Muhammad or wh whoever they are from the from the Fulani side telling us, oh, um, I, I mean, the incredibility, incredulity of the night of the of Bu President Buhari saying, oh, they are foreigners from another country. What are they doing in your country? What is your responsibility? Your number one responsibility as the president of Nigeria should be to ensure that that integrity includes the safety and security of the people within your borders. You shouldn't be sitting down telling us, oh, by the way, oh, they are from Cameroon. Oh, they are from this. That is not your concern. Your concern are the people within the borders of Nigeria. The minute they fail to do that, and, and, to, and, and the, 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 it, it's like him saying, I, I am not aware. That is, that is, it's, 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 it, it, honestly, it's equivalent to him saying, I am not aware that these people are coming to our country, taking our land. My brother, it is even worse. My brother, it is even worse. Yes. He said that, uh, he said that I assure you that we'll create grazing routes. This is, I, so I, I saw, yes, so, I know. Yeah, it's even worse. It's I even mean, worse. he's not even looking the other no. way. He's saying, I'm he's going a, to enable them. Enable. I'm going to give them land. So, that's so, what he's saying. Indeed. It's even worse than him looking indeed, the other way. Indeed. He's actually saying, I'm going to help them. 
and and the, and the, and that is the thing. Um, Joseph, Ke Dr. Joseph Carey, welcome on board, and um, good evening to you as well. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to join it. I only caught the end of your discussion there, and um, that's Thank very, you. very, very reasoned in the way reasonable. What you put put forward sir, was is very, very reasonable, and it it is a reasoned argument. One that mm -hmm. you can see a thread running through it. You cannot see a thread running through what the the president, the a whole president of that contraption. You cannot see a thread to say, okay, this thread is leading to him supporting Nigerians. The thread is going one way, to support foreigners, empower foreigners within the country. How can you tell me to believe in one Nigeria? Unless you are telling me to believe in it, knowing that at my expense and my ancestral expense, these people will come in, take our land, and nothing. There will be no consequences to them. We cannot no. carry on like this. is not, to be honest, we should all be outraged. And it is time I for us. I just highlighted something for us. Thank you. Let me just, let... just to buttress your point. Mm -hmm. You see how the uh, the locals. This is uh, this is in the middle belt. Yeah. Of Nigeria, mm -hmm. they're saying that the militants they will come to the village at night. There so you if you want to come peacefully into somebody's land, right? Would you come at night? No. Nah. To come and invade the villages? Nah. Come on now. No. Nah. So how can you tell me those are uh, farmers? It is not. It is not. How can it you is, call that a clash? It is. It no. is. Uh, it it, it is a narrative. In last, so, go ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sorry. In, in the last one month, um, in a community, in a Tib uh, community in southern Kaduna, mm -hmm. for one month, they mm -hmm. went night by night killing the indigenous people, displacing them. The military were post was there, but the military post in southern Kirin is meant to protect only the Fulani enclave, the emirate in Kafinch and, and the Zango in Zango. And when the youth who are trying to defend their community, I have records here of names of the army turned fire against the youth trying to defend, voluntarily defending their community from the onslaught of the Fulani. And so, and the governor is aware of it. The president is aware, and you will never hear a word from Buhari uh, wow. you know, empathizing or, or the governor saying anything about it. And the army is there, there's the army post, but they turn a blind eye, they collude exactly. with the military. I'm talking about last month, hmm. and they kill these young boys who are just voluntarily protecting their community without being paid. They had slaughtered them, the army. Now, not just the, anytime our the young boys are having uh, um, an upper hand against the invaders. Yeah. The military come in to stop them and so <laughs> that they can uh, kind of empower the Fulani invaders, the militias, you know, and that's what's going on. Even as a, this year, the last month, oh, one month. Do you, <laughs> do you know that was what happened in, uh, in Central African Republic because people yeah. People got tired of the whole thing, you know. Yeah. They got tired, and they and that actually the led to the the, 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 the president. The actually, actually, let me let me let me pull that up real quick. Yeah, the please. president had to run, right? And I believe uh, is Baba Faleti there because I think he he knows that story very well. But I also have something here that I'm going to pull up from the car. Um, the, the yes, car, thank you. Uh, events. Yes, go ahead. Yes, the the Putajalon agenda crosses the whole gamut of uh, West Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have uh, systematically, over the years, infiltrated the Central African Republic uh, political system and, the, and the, 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 mil the military system also. So much so that when uh, uh, the, the, the Fulani army officer, I can't remember his name now, uh, stayed the coup back in 2003, and became I became the uh, the, the the leader of the country. Mm -hmm. But then, but then the people. Somebody was saying something about Sango. Sango are the Sango and the uh, the the Tuaregs are the original uh, indigents of the Central African Republic. Mm -hmm. But because uh, Africans in general are very hospitable, they allow. The full needs to come in and sell it the, the same way that we've done in southern Nigeria, but they didn't come in to settle. They just came in to fire, to prepare a place to take it, to the take the land, take it over exactly yeah. to take over to take over the land. So 
uh, eventually they had an election where that Fulani uh, Bozos or something is, is, is the name eventually ran so I became president. Bozo. Yeah. Yes. And mm, then in George. 2011, the youths rose up because this, uh, this president usually used to be the military officer. Mm -hmm. So yes. the army was behind him. But when the youth rose up, I mean, it was a revolution carried out by sticks, machetes, and ding guns, mm -hmm. and drove the president out of that country in mm -hmm. 2011. Yes. It's the remnants yes. of those Fulanis that eventually started yeah, migrating that's it. Yeah. quietly to Nigeria beginning about 2015. Yes. Ah, so so yes. there is a connection between what was happening in Central African Republic and oh, Nigeria. Absolutely, absolutely. And Chad, yes. and Chad, Chad. I, and Chad, and Chad. And Mali as well. Mm. Yes, Mali as well. And guys, yes. one of the things uh, that um, uh, Papa Faletti said that's very important: mm -hmm. the youth rose up. Oh. Yeah, they did. The youth, yes, the did. youth rose up and liberated the country. Again, let me say this, and I know I keep repeating this. Mm -hmm. Every West African country needs to go and change their constitution yeah. to see that these people cannot be in their army. Yeah. They cannot be in their government mm -hmm. because we see this happen. And I'm, and I'm saying this because of what is going on. It's one thing in America where people come and it's a melting pot. That's not what's happening in West Africa. Mm -hmm. no. We get invaded. Yeah, yeah. And what they do is they move their people from one country to the other to change the, 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 the demographics, yeah. capture the military, capture the government, yeah. and then start ruling. Four, four West African countries are being ruled by Fulani. Hmm. The, the difficulty is... They, 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 they'll be part of the OIC, right? The Organization yeah. of Islamic Countries. Yeah. And... They are part of the supposedly the multi-regional joint forces, which has no Christian country in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are facts that our Nigerians need to understand. Okay. Yeah. And I think we're going to have like mini shows where we take each of these things, just kind of package them together and run them through one after the other so mm. people can really see what's going on. Mm. But the youth need to take note. They rose up with their sticks, their machetes, their... Um, you know, they're they, and they arrows, yes. and they chase those people out. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the, the complexity, uh, Jen, about Nigerian situation is that at the moment, the presidency, the, the military is in the hands of the caliphate. Indeed. The police yes. in the hands of the caliphate. The resources, the you know, all the military hardwares are not in the south anymore. They have been moved to the caliphate area. Mm. Uh, right, but, that, but and, that was the situation in the Central African yeah. Republic, oh, right? and the youth had to rise up, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not the, that the, 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 the adults are not going to join in. Where, where, I'm gonna, where, I'm gonna, where I'm trying to drive at is the complexity, and I'm not being uh, pessimistic. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you the reality is the, the synergy, because uh, once in Bongi, maybe if we, we probably need to look at the demography uh, or the the, the 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 complexity of ethnicity. Mm. The problem we have in Nigeria is the ethnic, the lack of synergy between the the div different divides, you know. But youth in different communities are now united to fend off this onslaught. Mm. But I think that the, the need to galvanize them at probably a national level. Mm. It has to be done at a national level to to because in in the only way the only way you can stop it as it as it now mm. is sadly sadly most of the political uh, so called political elite in the southwest in particular and in the southeast mm -hmm. they go to the Emirate Council the Caliphate to get endorsement to get. Uh, to get um, a blessing, yeah, you know, to offices, and they spend billions, billions. and millions of naira. They bribe them. They spend a lot of money to be able to oh, perpetuate wow. what is happening. Uh, is that lack of uh, education? I don't know. Is it? I don't know what it is. Or they've been blindfolded. Or what is it? They that see it. Hmm. So I think that's more complex to deal with. Unlike Central African Republic, I have oh, followed yeah. the trend. I followed uh, the trend. Yes. Um, th thank you, sir. You know, uh, I wouldn't go 
so far to say that uh, it's complex. Maybe I will say it's it's unique, but it can be okay. managed. Okay. Right. The, right. the, okay. The, if, if there's such a thing as complexity, is the influence of the the corrupt politicians in the yeah. south, yeah. the, the so-called enemies from enemies from within. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So ah. if we can galvanize, see, uh, there's the, the something something that minimizes the complexity now is the recognition of the West that uh, we are part of the pie that did not break the hegemony back in 1967. Mm. Because, well, and I apologize if I'm opening our uh, old wounds, because the 1967 only failed because the West did not realize what our eyes are now open to, thanks to Chief Sunday Bo. Mm -hmm. If we realize it then, we will have, we will have cut the snake at the head right there and then. In fact, by that in 1967, there would there will have been the end of what they call the Ausa Fulani, because the Fulani will have, the Ausa will have been energized to rise up and say, no, you don't belong here, and drive them back further north into the into the desert. So the only thing that it introduces any complexity into the equation is the enemies from within, uh, yeah. within us. So if we can find ways to get it to get rid of those and support our causes, mm -hmm. then of course we can uh, uh, unanimously tackle and, uh, and break the neck of uh, the full uh, hedge money. I, I guess if I could Thank just you. come in here. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, very, very valid contributions in this discussion. If I may just chip in a little bit. Um, one of the things that I really want to go back to, and uh, I was... Um, uh, I can see, uh, what's her name? Jean is there as well. I wanted to just touch back on what Jean said before. You see, we have to now look at this issue not only as an, a Nigerian problem. It is a West African problem. And I think until we begin to do that, if we are trying to you see the problem has been up to until this point, each of the nations, so-called nations, and I... And I, I use the word nations advisedly because we did not create those nations. Those were constructs by the Berlin Conference. But let's put that to one side. What has been happening up to this point has been many of the countries, Central, Af Af Central African Republic, would have a problem with Fulanese. They will face it themselves. Chad would have problems problem with, with, with Fulanese. They will face it themselves. Um, Ghana would have problems with, with, with the Fulanese. They will face it themselves. Now, Nigeria has a problem with, with Fulanese. They will face it themselves. Until we decide to have a meeting whereby and we would have to have a discussion that is west africa wide because the, the problem is we are simply ignoring and allowing these people room to go and when they move somewhere we don't connect and, and actually prevent them from actually destroying the next area we only focus on that area and oh it's solved no they come out somewhere else if you put out the fire in one place and you think it's over and you don't as you don't put a root stop to the root of those fire going across to other places. It will just shoot up somewhere else. That's exactly what is happening with us. And I think mm. really we have we cannot do this. One of the we have to recognize that we cannot do this alone. We cannot. And 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 please, I want to add something else to all of this. The Fulanis have got their proxies in a lot of this war. Their proxies in another way in this mm. European construct. So the, what we are facing is multifaceted. Please, when I'm saying this, it doesn't mean that we should get perplexed that, oh, how do we deal with this? No. We need to know the extent of the problem we face, and then we can begin to cut it down into chunk, uh, sizable chunks for us to deal with it. So some people we will put in the areas whereby they're dealing with things from that West African point of view. Others will be looking at it from the point of view of state basis and those two interlinking all the time all the time we are cutting the exit route for this for this thing to happen but it's a it's a lot of work it's a lot of work yeah. and joseph Kiari is very you know dr joseph Kiari is I, I, honestly i very much like what i'm hearing from you and, and it's something that we could build on and i think if we have a a a, a, a joint truly joint and multifaceted approach to this uh, this this problem that we have across West Africa because we're saying now four four of the of the, of the presidents four of them are Fulanese and they okay. don't and they are not majority in those countries no they're not okay uh, 
uh, my apologies. I, I like that idea. Are we in a position then to start uh, galvanizing a coalition of non fulani governments in West Africa to start this to start this conversation? Hmm. Uh, no, I don't think I don't think we can have that discussion here now. I don't think so. Let's not have that discussion yeah. here because mm. that, oh, no. yeah, we're gonna yeah. have. Let's not. I yeah, we, we are going together to talk about uh, little strategies. Okay, so let's not talk about that here. Let's uh, just. Anyway, it, it, it was just it was just a little side thing to make us look at the bigger picture. But of course, Absolutely. our focus right. still That's remains right. going back to right. exposing also. exposing the right. form right. of this government. Right. I mean, that, that's a Jamaican point, right? Because that's part of part of freedom is the court of public opinion. OK, mm -hmm. part of freedom is always the court of public opinion is always relevant in getting freedom. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this again, as I've said before, all the research shows that if Biafra had had the right friends and had the right court of public opinion early, they would have succeeded. Right. Mm. And so mm. we cannot make the same mistake. No. no. OK, we need to have the strategy mm -hmm. of our friend mm -hmm. who whether, you know, the the um, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Friend. Yeah. The enemy of my <laughs> enemy is my friend is, then, the, you know, the concept that we need to yeah. engage in with a problem that we face, right? That, that, and so that, that, that's very important. I, I quite appreciate that, that, that thinking. And there is something that's happened in Central African Republic now that I'd like to go into, but I don't want to do that on air. Let's look at that another time, you know, maybe, you know, and, and, and that is something that is very, very important here. Uh, and I think we are coming to the point where we're realizing that this is not something that we can do by ourselves. It needs that coalition, that joint thinking, joint action. Of course, the, 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 that doesn't mean that the work we're doing to raise the awareness in each of our communities, you know, in the South, must not diminish. They have to go hand in hand. If anything, we actually have to divert, we have to, to build that up more and continue to raise their level of awareness. And believe you me, I'm hearing some things that what we are doing is actually panicking the government. The discussions we're having here, people are really saying, oh, these guys, we don't want them talking about that they, because they don't want us to open the minds of the people. So what Thank we're you, doing... Thank you, my brother. Actually, yeah, actually, I want, to, I, I, I want to piggyback on what you said, really. You brought up a very, very important point, honestly. That you know, this problem is not is not just a Nigerian problem. It's not just a Yoruba or or Igbo or you know or, or Middle Belt problem. It's actually a West African problem. And so the it reason is. why these people have been able to cover much ground, the Fulani, is because you know each time they are attacking a set of people or a country, you know the other countries look the other way, like well, it's not our business. They are not here. So then once they are done there, or when or once they were pushed out of there, or if they conquered there, then they move on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Because I do know that, you know, back like in the early 2000s and even mid-2000s, mid you know, we were hearing about, we were hearing of all the, you know, the Central Af uh, African, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, you know, the problems there, the Fulani problems there, but it's because it, it I mean, hasn't really be become a problem in our land, you know, so we were like, okay, well, that they are, that's their that's their issue. Even when I mean, even when they started from north nine, I mean northern part of Nigeria, right? We were still looking the other way, and that's yeah. how they now they are now next door to us, and then we're yeah. suddenly awake. So very good that you brought up that that point. Yes, we should continue our grassroots, re, um, you know, um, you know, our yeah. our our our, our grass, grassroots outreach right now yes. that we're trying to do right <clears throat> but it's something that we should have in the long i mean in the long run that we should partner with other you know other countries other you know um you know uh, other uh, settlements in 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 west africa to kind of, because we are in the same boat we really are in the same boat. it's just a matter of time before they get to the next before they get to the next uh, location so so i think in the long run it's something that we should that should, we should put in our on our radar to say in the long run, you know, this is what we're going to do so that we can we can actually totally, you know, get to the root of the problem. Because right now, you know, we, if we walk around the problem, we're still going to we're still going to come back to encounter it. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Madikwe. Thank you. That, that's a brilliant uh, uh, observation. I mean, that's exactly it, the same strategy was happening, the same strategy in Nigeria. The million belt had been going through this 
for decades. Mm. It peaked with the coming of Buhari, of course, and we knew, some of us knew that it was going to peak, and we warned the people, didn't listen, but the middle belt had, I mean, <laughs> I personally, and I'm not afraid of sitting on there, Mm. I, it took me 30 years to fight a Fulani chief in my own village. Wow. 30 years. 30 years. Single 30 years to single handedly fight him to get over our land, which is our own, my father's land. Wow. He, the chief there, you know, galvanized people to lynch, to beat up my dad and lynched him under the result of his oh. death eventually. Wow. Sorry to hear I that. Whoa. I'm so sorry to hear you know, that. I know. Um, we we try to let the people know they didn't understand what we're going through. Mm. It's not this issue is today. very personal to you. No, it is. It is for me. Wow. It is personal. Wow. So it's I'm not so just a hearsay. I have you know in only it was in only in 2019 that we finished the last court case to get a piece of land that I bought since 1986. Only in 2018, as the last, I hope that's wow. the last case, but I can't count how many times we've been to court to fight, wow. you know, wow. okay. Wow. So that's, you see, so, so the expansionist, this is sobering. The, the expansionist tendency of the felony is something that has been there. We know it. the middle belt, I'm just talking about myself, mm. in that same village, there are countless helpless people even before Buhari's regime, they have lost their land. Now they are living there. They have to borrow the land that is meant to be theirs. They have to go borrow. and kind of uh, lease it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Lease it. And then you have to every year. Yeah. You have to yes, every year. Yeah, it's happening in Benoit State too. Yeah, yeah. So you have to every year now go and give something to the chief if you want to farm the land. My father yes. resisted it. And that's what cost his life. And some of us continue with the fight <laughs> about coming over to the UK has helped to a large extent to continue with the fight. Wow. It took me decades to convince my very close friends who are from the Southwest, uh, okay, who mm -hmm. were born and brought up in the same community mm -hmm. to even enlighten them about my plight. It wow. took me, it, I could not succeed to per permeate the, you know, the elitist uh, political class. The, the late deputy governor of of, of Kaduna State happened to be wow. a personal friend of mine, no, whose like, land, these yeah. people that have been taken over for oh, years. Wow. By the wow. And he did nothing about it. Okay. Wow. I'm just telling you how bad it is. I'm just telling you something that has been there for decades. In, but I'm glad that there's awareness now. The Southwest is getting aware. The yeah. Southwest is understanding our plight. And the, wow. if we could come together and, and find this deadly, deadly <laughs> poison. Okay, guys, we're going to be rounding up. This has been a really eye opening conversation. It is incredible. Programs because these are the ways that we determine how we win. Because a lot of times when we talk about, when I have personally talked to people to try to explain to them that strategy, they don't understand it. And that's why we're digging deeper, going mm. behind the scenes mm. and looking at what's actually going on. Mm. And that leads us to the path that we need to follow so that people can come along with us. Okay. Yeah. So now the question is, true or false? The killings by the Fulani in sub-Sahara Africa is herder farmer conflict. Nah. Is it false. true or false? False. No, no. Okay. It's... Oh, Professor Awan Yawu. Professor Awan Yawu. The full of the killing in okay. uh, sub Sahara Africa. Just heard a farmer conflict. True or false? That's false. false narrative. Yeah, I think we are all agree that it is extremely false. Not just false, but mm -hmm. extreme extremely falsehood. False. Yeah. And so, one of the things that I mentioned to uh, um, um, earlier, uh, Mojipe, is that reporter was asking the question but did not ask the Fulani man how have you considered the fact that you are on somebody else's land destroying his livelihood <laughs> why aren't the reporters in Africa around the world asking those true questions is this about terrorism is terrorism the fact that the Fulani constantly 
uh, unleashing terror or menace, as they call it, mm -hmm. on, on people up and down the aisle. Is that why everyone is shying away from this real topic? It is, uh... This is something that we have to really look at. This is an aspect of it that we have to look at and really try to find a solution to as we move forward. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that is clear today is that there is no herder farmer conflict in Nigeria, yeah. in Ghana, mm -hmm. in Central African Republic, mm -hmm. in Mali, in all these places where this is happening. All that is going on is that we have the Fulani coming in to take over land that they don't own Boom. and they doing it with force and killings of the indigenous people i think that it's clear why and now we need to make sure that we reach out to cnn to the bbc's to the al jazeera english to vanguard in nigeria to the newspapers around the world and provide them with the evidence that said heard of farmer conflict is bs that's fake news, news. Heard of farmer conflict is fake news. It's a narrative that's being used to take our land. Narrative. Yeah. In your country, destroying farmers' lands. There's land to be bought in Nigeria, right? Mm. So I just want to have everyone say, uh, take a minute, say your last few words and your comments to encourage our people and to also give them messages around what they need to do. They need to be talking to the governors, right? To tell them, resist the full of colonization in your yeah. state mm. that they have put in an amendment into the constitution. Those governors need to resist that. And those governors in the Alliance territory need to be the transition government. Mm -hmm. You need to be on the side of your people, mm -hmm. not the invaders, the perpetrators mm -hmm. and not the people that you keto to. You're there to take responsibility for your people. Okay, Majupe, final words. Yes. Thank you, Jean, and thank you, everybody, for your contribution. So to everyone that has been listening to our discourse here, there is nothing like other farmers clash. What we have going on is land grab. Again, mm. I repeat, it's land grabbing mm -hmm. by the Fulani, because everywhere they go, problem follows. I mean, different different ethnicity move ethnicities move from place to place. We have, like in Lagos, I'm from Lagos, for example. We have a huge Igbo population in, in in Lagos. We never heard of them getting somewhere. I mean, getting to Lagos and then people are dying and killing people on the land. They will come and lease if they need to lease the land if they need to use it for their business. But they are not telling people to. To, to move away from their land so that they can now do their businesses there. So as Jean said, all reporters, when you when you talk to these people and they tell you that, oh, uh, people, people are preventing us from, I mean, from uh from our trades. People are preventing us from moving our I mean from um from from earning our livelihoods, which is you know cattle rearing. Nobody is preventing you, right? What about the people whose land your cattle are feeding on their, I mean, who, um, whose crops your cattle are feeding on, right? What about those people? Is that not their livelihoods also? So those are questions that, that need to be asked. So if they tell you, if the Fulani invaders tell you that, you know, uh, that, that we are fighting because people are trying to prevent us from earning our livelihood, well, you ask them, on whose land are you, uh, I mean, on whose land are you, are you trying to earn your livelihood? Have you done the, have you done the needful? To make sure that that uh, that your cattle can actually graze on those on, on, you know on, on those lands, you need to if you oh, need the land, then you need to do the needful. You cannot say that you know people should just willy nilly you know accept. I mean, yeah, like you can just willy -nilly land, really uh, somebody's uh, land and say you know you want to you want to you, uh, you want to um, you know rear your cattle or you want to feed your cattle you know I mean with their, feed your cattle with their crop and then not even think about the owners of the land because. They're, because they too, they are losing because their crops have been, I mean, have been, I mean, have been destroyed unnecessarily. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave it there. Yes, there's, I mean, yes, we have Fulani problem. And the problem is not farmer others clash. The problem is land grabbing. Thank you. Okay, Citizen AY. 
Okay. Uh, your final thoughts. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for for this. Um, what I want to just quickly reiterate again. It's uh, you know very much in the lines of what um Dr. Modupe has, has has outlined. Um, many of the problems that we face here are from the non-indigenous Fulanese taking over our land, and what is more, uh, when we have when we have situations where um, there's damage to our crop, there's the fat fatalities, killings of our farmers. There is no compensation scheme put in place by the Fulani Caliphate. But if you kill one cow, if you kill one cow in the south, in the Atlantic Territory, if you kill one cow, they will get compensation. Even you're hearing that they're giving them land in Kaduna, for example. These are telling us that as people, those who are non-indigenous to our land consider their rights to be more and indeed superior to those <coughs> to whom the land belongs, which is yours and my ancestors in the South. These are the realities that we face. I urge us, please, we cannot ignore that. Many of us, we are incredible in the South, actually. When you think about those who make who succeed in the South, we are actually incredible because the obstacle that has been placed in front of us is almost insurmountable. But now it has come to the point where if we are not careful, even those who are succeeding now will be a slave forever. And now for the coming generation, we must speak up. We need to put a stop to this injustice. This cannot go on. We see the injustice with our eyes. You had Dr. Kerry, Joseph Kerry here, talking about his personal, how this has affected him personally. And I was moved to tears. I was crying inside. I don't know about you, but I was crying inside. when he. And I thank you for sharing the story because there's stories like that that makes us understand the enormity of the danger that we face. His own dad killed, you know, as, you know, unthinkable stuff. And we must really understand that as Southerners, that is what each and every single one of us faces. Unless we begin to work together, we must, must make sure that we, that narrative, that, uh, that this, this, this farmer had a, it's a, it's a, it's a fallacy. It's a falsehood. It's a narrative that's being used to not address the issue of the of the imposition of the non-indigenous people on our lands across the South. We must stop. We have to put a stop to all of these Ruga territories that they're trying to put place in place. The governors, we each, each of the people in, within the states, you have to make sure that your governors, your senators, your House of Reps, they begin and House of Assembly, particularly the House of Assembly. You need to start putting pressure on them to start passing laws to counter this Ruga attempt by the federal government. You need to take that action. And it needs us to continue to get out collectively to speak about this. I could go on more, but I will just stop for now. Thank you very much, Jean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Majibwe. If you could please uh, ready the um, Danjibas uh, <coughs> video for the end, that would be mm. perfect because we'll will end after that because that's really important for people to understand what he is saying. Okay, uh, Daddy Faletti, final uh, words. Thank you, ma'am. Just want to uh, summarize a little bit of what uh, Dr. Dupa and Ewa have said. Uh, the atrocities that we express from the Fulanis are only symptoms of the, the bigger uh, Futadelon agenda to make Nigeria in particular the Fulani Caliphate capital. Now, the Fulanis are, in one part, a pro uh, proxies for the indirect rulers, the Western, uh, the, the, the Western colonial masters, Britain and France in particular, I must say, it needs to be said. They are, they are first proxies for those who are benefiting surreptitiously from the land gains on their, on their part, and also, and also, second and most, most importantly, the Fulanis are the, the co-conspirators who are on a mission 
to fulfill their so-called uh, Danfodio agenda to colonize and make Nigeria uh, the full and the capital of, of the world, actually. They've verbalized it so many times. So as long as we put that in the forefront of our thinking, it, it, it's much easier to recognize why we have the, why we have the problem. And the, the government is complicit in it because in the process of uh, pulling the, uh, uh, the land grab apparatus together, they have uh, carefully ingrained themselves into the military, gone through the ranks, and then ingrained themselves into the political system so that now they can uh, turn around one day and ask everyone to turn in their arms and ammunition. And the Fulani, the, the Fulani herdsmen that I grew up with carrying sticks in those days are now able to walk around with AK-47s so that because they will, they will need that to be able to fulfill their agenda. And that's what we need to wake up to and not be, be hoodwinked into thinking that uh, we have a leadership problem. No, we don't have a leadership problem. Get it of the Futajala agenda and then we'll pick better leaders. And if they turn out to be bad, we can get rid of them on our own. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, sir. And uh, I have the video up. Uh, so yeah, wait, wait, wait. Let's let everyone talk and then we'll talk about that. I see that other people have joined and I didn't see. Um, okay, uh, Dr. Carey, yeah. your final words, please. Yes, One uh, of the thank things you, that it's really important, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, Daddy Paletti, I mean, when you speak, there's so much wisdom there. There's so much mm. wisdom there. And we really <laughs> need to pay attention to the things that you're saying. And, and, and not that everybody here isn't saying a lot of wisdom. Everybody is. That's, that's mm. the thing. This has been such a great show. Um, so, uh, Dr. Carey, if you may. Thank you very, thank you very much. My last, my last words for today is that what the middle belt have been going through, it's now gone to the stage of genocide. It's actually mm. not a conflict. So it's forced narrative because mm -hmm. uh, when you have families in the recent months been wiped away, uh, literally wiped away, in communities been decimated, and the people living in camps for months and years since 2015, it has gone beyond, it's not a conflict, it's never been a conflict, it's, uh, it's about control, land grabbing, it's genocide, displacement of indigenous inhabitants of a land. There, I, I want to plead to, I want to speak to my brothers in the southwest and the southeast, not to believe any other narrative, because uh, the Middle Belt, uh, like especially uh, Kaduna, it's actually the testing ground, the, exp the experiment, everything there. Hmm. And if it works there, and as it does seem to be, then it will be replicated all over, especially in the South. So it, it's time to stand up against this wicked agenda that had been there for decades, but now has been perpetuated and has peaked. They aren't stopping until we stop them. You, you have to stop the invaders. Uh, don't expect the invaders to stop. And I want to plead with our brothers in the South. You have all the intellect. You have all the resources, the education to rise up against that. And together, we can win this war. We, we Posterity, our children would will, will not you know, forgive us if we don't do anything about it. This evil agenda, this genocide, this land grabbing has to stop, and we have to stop the the wicked narrative. Hopefully, we reach out to the uh, you know the media, especially the, the global conspiracy, the BBC, the CNN. It's a conspiracy of silence all over. Uh, nothing heard about the massive killings going on, the thousands and thousands that are dying. And I hope that we'll be able to permit the media to know the world will know about what is happening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for that. And yes, yeah. it's not just that they, 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 they have, they think that they have proven it in the middle belt. Yeah. And it is now, it has now moved to the yeah. south. You see all the killings, unknown mm. gunmen, bandits, kidnappers, full of neat hurtsmen, killing in the southeast, mm. southwest. And it's moving next to the South South. And they and they have said in the video that we watched from Akintoye, right? And from Melafia, actually, it was Melafia that said so, that mm -hmm. they are going to start from the rural areas. We've seen that. Yeah. And then they're going to move into the cities and start killing randomly, right? Mm -hmm. 
That's the plan, people. That is the plan, and it is being executed before our very eyes with the complicity if the governors and the House of Reverend Senators will say after today that they do not know what the plan is after all this information that we have put out there, all this information that so many people have lost their lives over putting it out there, obviously that's highly disingenuous. Highly disingenuous. Mm. Because we need to know that this problem is greater than Nigeria. They are circling mm. West Africa to colonize mm. West Africa. Mm for the European masters, because we have the resources. So I'm going to give another person a, a chance here. Uh, let's see. I see that. Dr. Um, Anyang -Wu. Professor Anyang -Wu. Uh, Paul, did you want to, um, did you want to make a contribution? What about professor as well? Professor Anyang -Wu. No, 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 let me listen. No, thank you. Okay. So let us run the video. Uh, what about Professor Anyang Wu? Professor Anyang Wu? I think I started uh, I, with him. Oh, okay. I can only make a few. But, but, Prof, go ahead if you want to say something. Paul, I see that you're here also. If you want to make your, some final comments, we only have a couple of minutes and then we're going to be, uh, that we're going to be uh, going on. So this is your opportunity. <laughs> At the moment, well, I would I, say, I, I uh, Thank you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Go ahead, well, Prof, and then and then Paul will come to you. The final comment has never come. We are in a flowing river, and the water is flowing. And the soap is getting into our eyes. Yeah. I find it extremely distressing that at the time when the Buhari government disarmed the Nigerian indigenous nations. Yes. Only very few people actually thought that it was going to introduce or reinforce the Fulani hegemony. Mm. Every person was hiding behind the argument, no, he cannot do it. Yes. Uh, five years ago, we were discussing Fulanization and Islamization of Nigeria in um, Nido Forum. Some of us who brought up that topic, we are almost crucified mm. for thinking that a thing like that would happen. Today, all those people have kept silent and I would almost say they have become accomplished by silence. Another thing I would like to raise is the question of, we have not paid enough attention to the media. Look at the world history, his story, that's the history. If you don't tell people your history, nobody's going to learn about you. And if you control the media, you control the information, and it's the information that the media gives that can be used as a parameter for judging anything. So we have to rethink the way we handle things. Either only coming together to moon or carry our story outside, play the media or get to the media that has found it difficult to say or to give another narrative other than the truth. Mm. And another problem is we need people at the head who would be able to talk to the population. By that, I mean Nigerians, indigenous Nigerians, and let them understand really what is going on. And that involves or that includes uh, those of them who want to be presidents, who want to be senators, who want to be representatives in a constitution that has been rejected. I firmly believe that if we have um, 
the um the the Nina's agenda promulgated as it has, has been spelled out, every person or most Nigerians, most um indigenous Nigerians will at least take their faith in their own hands and we wouldn't be coming here any other time to start mourning about the Fulani people and what they have done to us. Thanks. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Did you want to, Paul, did you want to say um, a quick word and then we'll see the video and, and close it down? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, I joined very late. My, my main concern is about the silence of the media. I don't know. I, I believe this regime in Abuja has been able to silence the media. The media people are so afraid. You know, some programs are, are listening online, like on, like in Abuja, Nigerian Info FM. When you call, or the people who call to criticize the government, they shut them down quickly and mm. say, oh, we can't, we can't verify what you're saying. So there's any way we can find a way to reach these media people and, like you said, Jim, give them this evidence that they know already, so that they can put it out there. It will to help a lot. And the, the international media too. I believe that there are some sections of international media that are uh, sympathetic to the plight of uh, the indigenous people of Nigeria who are suffering from this constant Fulani massacre. The same way we can get to reach the public through Christian uh, organizations like here in US and all that. Uh, they can reach them with these videos so they, they, so they can play it. Try to, it to be shown across the world and people will know that these things this are really going on. Just uh, within the last week, there were some uh, killings in Benway. They killed a lot of people in Benway in some parts of, um, I, I don't know, it's Plateau and, and Adamawa as well. But, and, and all these areas are Christian uh, indigenous populations or, or moderate Muslims because they kill moderate Muslims too. So I don't know, it's a big problem. And the government, they have already turned their back against uh, the indigenous people of Nigeria. So it's, it's another problem we'll have to find a way to get the media attention. Because once media attention is focused on those issues, it helps to uh, bring the government to at least some level of actions. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, those are really, um, that's really the reality of what we've been talking about. I think we've talked about a lot of things today that people really need to listen to. And, you know, on this program, we try to bring all of this together because the strategy of the Fulani is to do things in bits so you can't see what they are doing. But we are at a, at a time right now where we can see what they are doing. And we should resist what they are doing. We should stand up. We should do all the things that we've talked about to see that we save the indigenous people because their extinction, there is ethnic cleansing going on. Mm -hmm. And so it is the responsibility of those that know to see that the others catch up, understand, and join in. And so on that note, let us take a look at what T.Y. Danjuma hmm. And yes, I know some people have problems with it, but, you know, everyone comes to Christ or, uh, or Muhammad or, you know, whatever else that you believe in at some point. And he did come there and he did make mention to everyone. So, Madhupay, if you can please but the peace uh, in this cue that up so that we don't have commercials, but we, we can go straight to it uh, so There's that we can... She's playing it now. Here. Okay. Yeah, it's not um, it's not coming up yet. In this state, Madhupay, are you sharing your screen? She's play, she's yeah, sharing the so screen. It's playing. It's playing. Okay, I, it, I can't hear it. That means I'm not sure oh, if oh. everyone can hear it. I can, I can hear it. Yeah. I can hear it. Yeah, most okay. of us can hear it. I believe. Okay. Can you see the video also? Can you see? The yeah, video I, I, can yeah, I can see it here. If you can restart it, sorry, because I was speaking over it because I couldn't. I can't hear it. Uh, let's go back. Whoa. Okay. Now, yep. Yeah. Go back to the beginning again if you can. Please, Dr. Bulukwe. Thank you very much. Yes. Now. But the peace in this state is being, is under assault. 
there is an attempt at ethnic cleansing in this state and of course in all the riverine state of Nigeria. We must resist it. We must stop it. Mm -hmm. Every one of us must rise up. The armed forces are not neutral. They collude. Mm -hmm. They collude. They collude with the armed bandits. They kill people, kill Nigerians. They facilitate their movements. They cover them. If you are depending on the armed forces to stop the killings, you will all die one by one. Hmm. Hmm. Cheating. Cheating. Absolutely cheating. Very, very powerful words. And the reason why we show these videos is to have our people actually understand what is going on. Um, uh, Mr. Folletti talked about the fact about the, the there might be disarming, that disarming already happened and is now every day the cleanup process of taking any kind of weapon, including machetes, away in southern Kaduna, which has been happening this past couple of years. Mm -hmm. That is already happening. And they justify it. Gummy says that they needed to protect cattle. What is more important? <laughs> cattle or oh, human, human life? Beings. Which one should be protected? I believe it's human life. Yeah. Not cattle. But that's so on not that what they believe. They, they believe note, in themselves and their cattle. That's all. Right. Mm -hmm. They say that a hundred humans equals one cattle. This was what Miti Ella said. The hundred humans equal mm -hmm. one cattle. Yeah, this is themselves, but not this us. Is, this is this is his statement. Mm -hmm. So yes, and they get a hundred million naira for it too. Yeah. From Buhari. Uh, uh, yes, yes, they, 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 they did to stop kidnapping, which apparently we know has not stopped, right? That was in 2019. We have that video too. So um, the, the, the thing that we need to, you know, educate our people on is that we are in an, we have an existential threat, meaning there is an attempt, a very serious attempt going on currently at ethnic cleansing. The middle belt has been taken the brunt of it. That's what's called ethnic cleansing. That's what's called genocide. Yeah. There's no is buts or wherefores as to what those are. And we cannot mince words here. So thank you, everyone. Next week, we will be um, tackling another topic that we will um, um, put out later. But I want to thank everyone for incredible insight into the issues that we face as a nation, as a people, and for the existence, our very existence of not just ourselves and our cultures, but the future of our children. So thank you all very much. Have a great week, and we'll see you back here next Saturday. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Everyone. Bye for now. And uh, my brother, I'll pick up your phone when people call. Will do. I do. I'm going to say, I'm going to call you straight away. I'm going to call you straight away.